Tonight we have she crab soup, which means it's um, she crab with the eggs in the soup. As far as she crab is concerned, that would be the, the female part. No, it's the female crab. Okay, the tail, tail of the crab. No, female is oh, female, right. the crab with the eggs. Okay. So they say if you look on the bottom of, of a crab, you can tell a male or a female because one looks like the Washington Monument, one looks like the Capitol. <laughs> well, that's well, the one they call the female is the one they call an apron. Okay. Because it's like that. Now, as far as your preparation, how much does that entail as far as the uh, shoe crab soup? Well, it entails if you start from the beginning, picking the crab, the meat out of the crab. We didn't do that. We bought it already picked, pretty much picked. And then um, we have, um, see what I've been, butter, and uh, then some flour to thicken it a bit, and, and lots of cream, milk, and heavy cream. That's the basis. And some flour to thicken them. And then I cook that until it, until it loses its uh, bland taste. And then I add some sherry, cayenne pepper, salt, and black pepper. How would you say, how, what would describe your influence on in cooking? Would it be a southern, particularly like a regional cup of yeah. I think you would say southern. With that, because uh, uh, begin with Virginia, and South Carolina, uh, Georgia, and Alabama, and Mississippi. Um, and, and those eight states, Kentucky. Um, <laughs> currently, currently, you're residing out of Atlanta. Atlanta. Yeah, she, she was at I'm in Atlanta because I'm from Virginia. But, uh, and I retired. <laughs> but then I came out of retirement to go to Atlanta because we are forming a organization called the Society for the Revival and Preservation of Southern Food. Because uh, if we don't, it'll be lost completely. And we will, we also plan to have a cooking school and we'll revive some of the, the, the old dishes and collect old recipes and bring back uh, some of the old dishes that we had in the past. I'm doing the same thing I did, my parents did, and everybody else did with southern food. We may cut out on salt a bit, but uh, people talk about greasy greens. We never cooked the greasy greens. The meat was cooked, and you had cured pork. Not those so-called ham hocks, because they are just rolled in a prepared smoke. They're not really ham hocks. They are the knuckle that are cut off all the pigs that they cut out west, and there are tons of them. So they just put them all in a smoke and phony smoke and call it smoked ham hocks. It's not true. A smoked ham hock has a fragrance from the cured ham. Sometimes we cut it off before we cook the ham and save it for cooking beans and greens. And if I do cook greens and, and beans and pork stock, I cook it a day ahead and then skim off most of the fat. You need some fat to make it shiny. Otherwise, it'd be dull. And, and you need some fat in your body anyway. In the, in the beginning, blacks were really the only cooks, and they are the ones that developed uh, the food of the South, which they call Southern hospitality. That was done by black men. There were many black men in home kitchens. They were in the hotels, they were in the railroad, they were on boats and boarding houses. And through their cooking, they developed techniques and flavor and and they call it the Great Southern Food. And then uh, World War II, well, the Depression came, and people hardly had food to eat. And then uh, World War II, so a lot of the, uh, the men, of course, went off to war. And the women did, too. They went to work in the war plants. And they left the big children home to take care of the little ones. And they never came back. So while they were out in Ken Kentucky Fried Chicken and all those uh, fast food places, and young people that grew up 
with the mothers out working, didn't have a chance to learn from the older people because uh, they were truly, and they truly produced the only regional cuisine in this country is a southern cuisine, fully developed. And uh, a lot of people don't know that. You can read about it, but wasn't that much written about it at that time because uh, people were enjoying good food and they didn't think about putting it down. And I read in a, in a book that's called uh, Lady of Charleston, a relative did a story on the Lady of Charleston, and she said that uh, blacks developed the menu and whites written it down, because at that time, blacks couldn't read and write. And then, as a matter of fact, they weren't allowed to. So naturally, the, the whites put it down, and they didn't say blacks did it, but they just put it down. Yeah. And then when the book was published, published by some white person, I also came across in my research a, uh, in the back of this book, this woman said, of course black develops the recipes, but the whites written them down. So the early recorded history of food was developed by, was put down by whites, but blacks had a hand in development, which is really most important because uh, the more they cooked, the more ideas came to them, and they incorporated what they had seen their parents do. And that's why we had such a great uh, Southern cuisine, hot breads of all description. One major question. In the development of your school of the future, what do you hope to achieve? I hope to achieve by recruiting young people and older people, too, and all those that want to study Southern cooking, that with good ingredients, and a sense about flavoring to let people taste a real southern food. There is a, um, a restaurant that's open about two months in Atlanta, and it's called the Horseradish Grill. And there's a young man that's worked with me. He's a chef there. And when they open, uh, people came by drill. The restaurant holds about 125 people, but they have 500 people at night. People have to wait for an hour or more. And so someone said to him, what kind of food is this? said, it's southern food. <laughs> but it's carefully prepared and researched and presented in the same uh, manner that it was years ago. From the last event when you were here a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. Washington, Love and Lewis. What do you think of this, this uh, event tonight? The event tonight, I think it's uh, probably an improvement over what we did before from what I see, and everything tastes real good <laughs> so far. I think it's going to be great. So you'll see yourself, too. <laughs> Pan for dessert, the eloquent and gracious Chef Edna Lewis has prepared this delectable blackberry cobbler with fresh vanilla ice cream. because those were the two famous cobblers in the South, peach and blackberry. Who first makes the dough, it's a very short dough, and then either blackberry or peaches, you uh, peel the peaches and quarter them, or you uh, clean the blackberries. You, uh, you can make a dough that's covered, or you can make it in strips, or you make it like this, but it's always sort of open so you can see what the fruit is. And it's, uh, I like to use nutmeg, nutmeg and sugar, and then lace it with pieces of butter on top, and then fold it in, and then sprinkle it with some pounds of cube sugar, give it a nice crisp.